So today we're joined by Mark Hunter, the sales hunter on the Quotable video series. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on today. Looking forward to it. Thanks. And for people that aren't familiar with some of the work that you're doing, can you give us a quick introduction? Sure. The, sure. Uh, a few years ago, I wrote the book High Profit Selling, backed it up with another book we're going to be talking about now, High Profit Prospecting. But I spend the majority of my time traveling around the country and really around the world, keynoting at conferences on sales and sales leadership. Perfect. So you're constantly focused on the sales professional, right? And your previous book, High Profit Selling, uh, maybe you could just, uh, it may be self-explanatory in the title, but maybe you can give us a quick overview on, on how that book benefits the sales professional. Yeah, one of the big problems salespeople have is they discount sales to try to close it. You know, they get the customer right there and they suddenly discount. What this book walks you through is a series of strategies that allows you to close more deals at a higher profit and actually close deals faster, which really is the ultimate goal of every salesperson. Absolutely. And, you know, today we're talking about high profit prospecting. When does the book come out? Book comes out really uh, this next week. The Kindle copy comes out, and the audio comes out, and then the book comes out in September. Perfect. And you know, just just talk a little bit about what's kind of the elevator summary of the book. You know, clearly you've got high profit selling. You've just described there, but with high profit prospecting, is it purely focused at the beginning of the journey and, and some of those best practices for that sales professional? Well, it is focused at the beginning of the journey because what I found is that people have a hard time closing because they've been prospecting the wrong type of people. So what I want you to do is I want to show people what are strategies to help them find the right prospect because if you have the right prospect you can close them faster and at a higher profit. And is it targeting uh, B2B, B2C, enterprise, mid-market, small business? Like who, who is the key audience here? Yeah. It really is designed to the B2B audience and the enterprise level. Now, the smaller person is going to find a tremendous amount of value in, in, in it also because the strategies still hold the same. Because the strategies are really designed around the prospect, not around the product. Right. Absolutely. Well, let, let, let's jump in. And I think, you know, one of the first areas uh, that you start to talk about is, is social media. And you know, I think both of us are, are familiar with many people in the industry. Uh, we've talked about social selling. And uh, I remember running a, uh, a webcast a few months ago where we talked about actually it perhaps should be called social prospecting. Uh, I know we've got different people that talk about how social is just another layer to that selling process. It isn't something separate. What's your views on, on social uh, with regards to prospecting? Well, social fits into prospecting very, very much. And, and I'm not going to discount the power of social media. It works. The problem we've had is that social media is just that. It's one to thousands. And if you think about what is social selling, that's really bringing it down to a one to one, one to one relationship. What I show people in, in this book is how do you merge all of these elements together? Because guess what? The telephone still works. Email still works. And there's things like text messaging and all these other tools. And how do you put all of those tools together along with social selling? And, and I don't use the word social selling, so to speak, as the social media platforms are really one-to-one -one communication devices, all designed to help you prospect to the right person you're looking for not just this audience of thousands out there. And you know, one of the things that I'm personally really passionate about is, is making sure that on social media channels, at, you know, working at a technology company, that we're not just pushing product down people's throats. Um, uh, you know, to, to your point, you've got to have the right type of content. Uh, it has to be relevant for that, that right individual. Um, so what, what are your views on you know, the different types of content, the different channels to use? to ensure that social media really is effective when it comes to prospecting? Well, this is what you have to be careful of because in, in the first several chapters of the book, I, I really challenge people to really, really analyze who is the prospect that you're going after. And you may ultimately wind up with five or six different prospecting strategies for the five or six different types of prospects that you have. And each one may use social media in a different manner. Each one may use email in a different manner. You have to target the message not around what you're selling, but around the outcome that you're going to help provide to the prospect. That's really what it is. It's about the outcome that the prospect and ultimately customer is going to gain from working with you. And, and so you, do, do you prefer certain social channels over others? You know, there's, there's so many now. Um, do oh. you, where do you start? 
Well, th- this is one. And, and one of the things I talk about, if you're in B2B, you have to select the, the, the platforms very tightly. Now, if you're in B2C, you need to go wherever the consumer is because, again, they're going to be messaging you. But in B2B, and let's talk B2B, you need to focus on just the platforms that you can do really well. I, I, really, I, I talk a lot in the book about LinkedIn because that really is the B2B messaging platform. But how do I use Facebook? How do I use Twitter? And again, it's going to vary by industry. There are certain industries that very much embrace Twitter. There are other industries that don't even know what Twitter is. They they think it's a bird out there. So again, you've got to tailor your messaging. This is why it comes back to, I'm going to select channels of communication that fit the specific prospect type I'm going after. And um, what's your view on the difference between social marketing and social selling or social prospecting? Um, you know, so I, I think there's a right time and a right place to to really be putting out those social blasts. Um, but but that's not necessarily the most effective method for me. Let's say if I'm in a sales role to actually go and get that meeting with a with a prospect. Well, you're right because the social blast isn't going to get you the meeting. Now, what the social blast is going to do is it can help create a framework of what you're known by. Because think about this. You call somebody up or somebody calls you and they're they're asking for a meeting. The first thing you're doing is you're Googling their name. So to a certain degree, what does social media do? It helps create a platform, a level of awareness for you. So that's very critical. But social blasting is not going to get you. What I want you to do is, is I want you to take every single tool out there and use it as a one-to-one messaging tool. I get business directly through Twitter. I get business directly through Facebook. I get business direct because I'm using them as one-to-one tools. But that is not to replace the power of the telephone, the power of email, the power of the more traditional me- – gee, email, traditional? Yeah, it's almost become a traditional tool out there that's wasted. Where, where's but- the fax machine? You know, Do, do people uh-huh. still do that? I, you know what? I tell you what, I, I work in some industries where the fax machine is still very much alive. So, again, right. you've got to know your industry. Right. Well, look, so, so you, let, let's move on to the telephone. Um, you know, I, I know there's different views. I just want to start off on the, on the demographic, for example. So, I'm a millennial. Uh, the view out there is that I do not like picking up my phone. Uh, I don't like dialing people. I like communicating in email, in social, and uh, to your point, uh, they are the channels that work for me. But there are many people uh, that actually do do use the phone, you know. And, and I think it's uh, it's still a very relevant um, uh, uh, communication method, you know, for salespeople. So let's just talk about um, in your book. What do you talk about as the value of the phone and, and calling with regards to prospecting? Well, let's first of all take the elephant in the room: cold calling. Okay, the only thing irrelevant is the word cold. Because there's, there, there is no reason to make a cold call. Calling still works. Now, you're a millennial. Now, you may not like the phone. I, I, I certainly get that. But I, I'll argue, and, and, and I show in the book strategies as to how you can use the telephone effectively. And this, again, what I have to do is I have to develop communication methods that are tuned into the prospect I'm going for. So for you, I may use, I may use text messaging. I may use email. For somebody else, I may use Facebook only. For somebody else, I may use, I may use the telephone. But it's, it's being comfortable with whatever strategy the customer, the prospect, wants to receive your messaging on. And, and do you still see, you know, let's that, say I'm prospecting in, into a particular executive. Um, I remember when I started my sales career, I did so much training about getting past the executive assistant or the gatekeeper. Uh, do you, you know, Presumably, that's still very valid, right? How do you actually get through to that executive on the phone? Oh, getting past the gatekeeper is still a critical. And and people say, well, gee, there are no gatekeepers. Oh, no. Many times the gatekeeper is voicemail. But we'll we'll save that for later. One of the challenges that we have to keep in mind is the gatekeeper is an extension of the decision maker. And what I have found in many, many situations is it's the gatekeeper that actually is the decision maker. And too many times as salespeople, we want to blow past and we don't realize, and and I have a chapter just devoted to the gatekeeper because I want to use the gatekeeper as my decision maker, minimally my my influencer to the decision maker. 
So I'm going to use, all, again, all kinds of different messaging techniques because I can, I can communicate to a senior level executive on a Saturday morning. And guess what? That senior level executive is going to receive that email and the gatekeeper won't because the gatekeeper's off. See, so again, I'm going to use different strategies depending on the messaging I'm trying to get through. And, and you mentioned cold calling there. Let, let's just say cold prospecting. Uh, I, I just want to move on to that. There is no excuse now for for that whatsoever. You know, let, let's go back to social. The majority of people have a LinkedIn profile. It is, uh, you know, depending on your industry, uh, it is very rare that you don't have a LinkedIn profile. Um, and, and, and the information is out there. You know, I just I think there is zero reason for you ever to send a generic prospecting email, tweet, LinkedIn message, call, cool, right? Uh, you know, agree. And, and maybe I don't know anything about you, but I do know something about your industry. And I know then what you're going to be dialed in on, what you're going to be focused on. So minimally, I can make that initial call, however it comes, focused in on that critical subject. It is never about me. Hi, I'm a great person. I've got great. We no, I'm sorry. The capability presentation died 20 years ago. Right. Or hi, what keeps you up at night? Or hi, I'd like to spend 30 minutes to understand your top priorities. You know, look at my website. Look at my LinkedIn profile. You, you there's no reason. Like, what's in it for me? The WIFM, right? What's in it for me? And you, you need to be giving back straight away. You got it. So spot on. Um, you mentioned voicemail there. So let, let's assume again the gatekeeper is off, or you've uh, you know, you, you haven't been able to get through to that executive that you're trying to prospect into. Um, what have you found within the book is, is the most effective type of voicemail? Yeah, voicemail works. But here's, here's, the real, here's the secret sauce. Your voicemail message needs to be between 11 and 14 seconds. Now, think about that. 11 and 14 seconds. Because I, I, I'm sure you've listened to voicemails that go on and on and on. And you go delete seven or delete right. five or hashtag. You, you, no, you hate them. But the person who leaves you that very tight message, hi, Tim, Mark Hunter calling, got some new information regarding X. Give me a buzz. I'm at 402. You know, you know, I can leave a message like that in 11 to 14 seconds very easily. And you know what's interesting? You're probably going to listen to the whole thing, and then you're going to say, wow, at least this guy respects my time. At least she respects right. my time. You know, you know, whatever. So I say the 11 to 14 second voicemail is the billboard along the side of the road. It's the advertisement that you read. Are they going to call back? No, but it allows them to be messaging as to who you are. I mean, it's, it's funny you say that about those voicemails that go on and on. I've, I've, you know, we've all had so many of them, and the amount of times I've got halfway through and I go, "Okay, I, I, I get it. Like, I'm just going to call you," and then I, I ring them and I say, "I didn't listen to your voicemail, but I know you want something." Um, so clearly, it would be a lot more effective for both people to actually know what you're talking about and to be much clearer and conciser with that voicemail. Right. But you know what? That brings up an interesting point. Every phone call can go one of three ways. One of three ways. It can be answered by the gatekeeper or just somebody who's answering the phone. It can go to voicemail or the decision maker. You know, each one of those three requires a completely different strategy that you have to be prepared for. Because this is why salespeople get caught off guard. They're expecting somebody to answer. It goes to voicemail. What do I do? You have to be, before you call, you have to have three different strategies in play that you can use quickly, effectively, efficiently. Perfect. And presumably if people want to go into their strategies, it's in the book, right? It's, it, it's in the book. You bet. <laughs> nice plug. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Uh, let's, let's move on to emails. We talked a little bit about social, about phone and voicemail, a little bit on fax machines. Uh, let, let's jump about to emails. And, you know, uh, before we jumped onto this interview here, we, we were both having a conversation about some of these really annoying prospecting emails that we've been getting, um, you know, and, and, and then when you don't respond and you get the second email going, I didn't hear from you. Um, I, th there's a lot of really, really bad practices right now. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there, there are some great ones, but unfortunately there is uh, a, a group of sales development people that are, are giving the industry a bad name. Um, j just at a top level, what have you found with email when it comes to prospecting? I know this is a massive discussion. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. we, what are some of the highlights? Yeah, we could go on forever. Three quick points. One, write the email to be read on a smart device. We write the email on our laptop, whatever, because you know we're writing this prospect email. Write it to where it can be viewed on a smart device, which means one, subject line. Subject line has got to be about you, not about me sending it. In other words, it's got to be about the person receiving it. 
The first 100, 150 characters is what's typically going to come up on somebody's phone. They're going to make that as the decision as to whether or not to read it or delete it. Guess what? You better make sure that first 150 characters is not, hi, I'm Mark Hunter. I'd like to introduce myself. Delete. Boom. Right. So you, if you follow those three things and keep your email tight, I say no more than four to six sentences, one to two sentences per paragraph, not more than three paragraphs, double spaced. That's it. And no attachments. Keep it clean because I want to be able to have somebody view it on a smart device and say, hey, I want to connect with this person. I think the subject line is so critical. I know from a marketing point of view, uh, there's whole courses and training, uh, you know, purely just around that subject line. Um, so for sales professionals who aren't necessarily going through that training, any best practices there that you'd like to share with regards to that subject line? Well, you want to keep it as timely as possible and you want to keep it on a subject that is relevant. You may be, you may be selling into the HR community. So you may sit there and, and say, you know, reg, R-E-G, period, update on labor laws or something like that. That may be your subject line because that, that's, a, that's a subject that's going, to be, that's going to be relevant to the HR person that you're sending it to. And the first 150 characters build on that. Then you can explain more. But again, keeping it to four to six sentences, that's it. Because all I want to do is create a level of interest. That's all I want to do. Right. So, so look, we, we've, we've talked about these different channels. Um, let's say you've just been given a new territory. Uh, you've got to identify your key prospects. Uh, planning is, is clearly a critical piece, right, to understand uh, which channels are you going to use and, and what processes you, are you going to develop for your prospects. Oh, without a doubt. And, and here's a key thing. Don't start what you can't finish. Too many people have this habit. Well, I'm just going to make a bunch of phone calls. I'm going to send out a bunch of emails, and, I'm gonna, and, and, and that's it. One and done is not a prospecting strategy. Spraying and praying is not a prospect. i got to start at the end. How many contacts, how many touch points is it going to probably require? Is it going to require 8 to 10, 10 to 12? And, and i and I got to lay out on my calendar how I'm going to make those happen. So what I do is when I start, I know I can finish. Because too many times what happens is salespeople make one or two contacts and they get inundated and they walk away and they never follow through. And then they say, prospecting doesn't work. No, it works when it's done right. Right. Let, let, let's talk about, um, again, across all these different channels. So we talked about don't lead with yourself. Um, we know not to necessarily lead with product. Um, what, what would be your advice? Let, let's just say you've done all your research. You believe you understand some of the buying points. Um, what sort of content should, should you be sharing uh, with that prospect? Well, again, the content is going to be, you know, I may have a couple hundred prospects, we'll say, but I'm going to, I'm going to break down. I'm going to isolate. And, and, and those prospects may have five or six different really needs or outcomes. So I'm going to come up with one piece of information, one piece, uh, one question that I can put into emails. And every time I send you an email, every time I call you, it's going to be a different message. This is the key thing. Never repeat. Go back to that conversation we had before we got on doing this. All those stupid emails. Did you get my email last week? Did you get that? That is so stupid. It always has to be something different because what I want to be seen, I don't want to be seen as a vendor. I want to be seen as somebody who can be a strategic value added partner with you. When you see me as that, then you're going to be willing to engage with me. Perfect. Well, Mark, I think you've given a great, uh, great high-level insight as to some of the uh, pieces within your new book, High Profit Prospecting. Anything else you want to add? Well, you know, I'll tell you what, the, the whole thing regarding prospecting comes back to your attitude. What is your attitude? And this where, I, and, and, I, and I give an example in the book of a couple uh, 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 salespeople, same prospect list, same everything. One has terrific results, one doesn't. Why? Because they have a good attitude. You know, it's amazing. You're going to get out of prospecting what you put into it. And my whole objective when I go into prospecting is I want to help you, the prospect, see and achieve something that you didn't think was possible. When I have that and I use as my framework every time I contact you, I just want to earn the right, the privilege, honor, and respect to be able to meet with you again. Guess what? I'm going to be successful in prospecting. Perfect. Well, Mark, appreciate your time. Everyone go check out High Profit Prospecting and uh, looking forward to hearing more from you, Mark. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.